Guys, let's face it, times are tough. The industry is quickly moving, traders have just had to migrate to completely new platforms, and there's a lot of uncertainty about what the future holds. So while we remain very optimistic about the future, it's time to turn things around. We have a fantastic video for you today because we just recently processed a couple months back one of our largest single payouts of all time. That's right, we did not clickbait the title. This trader received a payout of over $18,000 and it took him less than one month to make it. And so today we're going to be breaking down some of his trading stats. We're going to be breaking down specifically one of his trades where he made roughly $9,000. I'm going to see if I can figure out myself how he did this, what the trading setup was. And we have a lot of good stuff for you. This is the type of video that I loved watching when I was first getting into trading, when I was trying to become a funded trader. So let's get into it. We're not going to waste your time. We're going to get right into it. Here is the deal. This trader was trading on a $200,000 funded account. They passed our two-step evaluation, which meant that phase one, they made 8%, phase two, they made 5%, and on both phases, they had a 10% max drawdown level. So plenty of breathing room. So here, we're going to first take a look at the chart to see what went on. This is back in November and the blue line is the equity. So you can see here that there was a huge spike up to from 200,000 to $217,000. This trader was absolutely crushing it, but that was just the equity. You can see that the balance was not increasing. The trader was holding their trade for a while. And this is important. This is what we're going to get into when we break down specifically one of his trades. And so it looks like we're seeing some swing. We're seeing some swing trade activity. So Massive spike up 17%, but the trader did not close it. And then we continue on the equity drops all the way down to $192,000. So that is like a $27,000, $25,000 swing. The emotions from that must have been absolutely massive, but the trader continued on and the lowest that the equity dropped, I believe was that level of $190. $1,000. It dropped again here, 194. And that's when things started to improve from there. The balance went up to $219,000. We then saw another dip all the way back to 210,000. But then we saw around the time of payout, uh, the balance was $219,000. So overall, huge, huge swings in this account. I think this is super important to know. Back when I was trading an FTMO account, I had tons of ups and downs and it was incredibly emotional. Just winning or losing a thousand dollars could make or break my day could make or break my week and so the fact that this trader bounced back from being up going down being back up being back down but finishing on top i think this is that's a huge takeaway for this video when you're struggling i want you to remember this if your current trading metrics look anything like this this is evidence that you can bounce back so first off that is the main takeaway so far that uh, you can absolutely bounce back. All right, let's get down into some specific trading statistics, some specific trading metrics, because I think this is where we can often find some of the largest takeaways from the successful trader. So $200,000 account, the average loss was $4,116, but the average win was $8,270. So two important things to note here. One, the risk to reward is fantastic. The average RRR is 2.01. This is fantastic. This really bodes well for long-term sustainability of the account, long-term profitability of the account. But again, remember, one of the most important lessons that I ever learned on my trading journey was the inverse correlation between your win rate and your risk to reward. This is literally something that nobody talks about. And I don't know why, because it was such a huge pillar for my trading success. You need to understand that the higher your win rate is, the smaller each win is going to be. Whereas if you have huge wins, that's not going to happen as often, which means your win rate is going to drop dramatically. And that is exactly what we see here. A risk to reward of two, you might not think is that impressive. We can tell you based on the data of thousands of traders, two is actually incredibly solid, but it shows in the win rate. The win rate is quite low at 40.9%. So you need to determine what game are you playing? Are you going for the high win rate? and in exchange you're getting small wins or are you willing to lose 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent of your trades but each win that you do have will be larger you need to determine that for yourself but the second takeaway here is the average loss so on a two hundred thousand dollar account that's an average loss of two percent now you might be thinking two percent that's fine two percent is a lot two percent is is a lot and it goes to show when we look at the trading metrics of going from a balance of two hundred thousand 
equity of 217 back down to 192 almost breaching the account those huge swings long term do not bode well for sustainability because the win rate is low so if the average loss was two percent uh but the win rate was you know 70 percent the metrics would change quite a bit but long term i think this trader is at risk of ruin because of the win rate and the average loss so that's something that that's very important to know it, huge payouts are obviously super motivating but in terms of long-term sustainability what game are you playing are you going for you know a whole bunch of payouts that are smaller or are you trying to get that one large payout by over risking we don't allow over risking at lark so something to keep in mind but i wanted to go a little bit deeper i wanted to find one of his largest wins try and reverse engineer what it was that he did you can see here that on november 7th between november 7th and november 10th 10th. This trader took a seven lot sell on gold and profited $9,765. So the question is, how did that happen? Well, hopping over to TradingView, I put in a few of the metrics for the trade to try and reverse engineer things. And here you can see the trade uh, very well. So the entry was at 1968.75. The stop loss was at 1974, this red line here. And the trade was closed at 1954. So on face value, the take profit level makes complete sense to me. You can see that we have a very strong support level here, and we also tested it just previously here. The trade was entered on the 7th, which would be in this area right here. You could see that it is a retest of this uh, support turn to resistance. So that would be confluence number one. That looks pretty obvious. This is the four hour chart. So I'm not seeing any moving averages. Um, perhaps there was, and most likely there was one uh, on the lower time frame. For me, I always like using Fibonacci. So I'm gonna throw a Fib level from this high here down to the low that we made. And you can see we didn't quite hit the 38, but I can tell you that this is probably the 23.6 level. Again, no idea if this trader used any of this analysis. This is just from face value, what I am trying to figure out. The trader did enter at uh, 1968, just below 1970. 1970 would certainly act as a key level, uh, psychological level, that round number. So that could be a second confluence, but in my opinion, not a super strong one. Really, this just looks like a very obvious uh, break of support, support turn resistance, and then re-entering. Now, on the four hour, you can't see any candle confirmation uh, for how the trader entered or why the trader entered. It's possible that they used um, a pending order, which I personally love to use, but it's possible that on a lower time frame, perhaps it was a candle confirmation that led to them entering here in 1968. However, the trader did hold the trade for three days, getting this nice movement here. It's interesting to note that had the trader continued to hold, they could have really dramatically increased their win to a risk reward of 7.26 rather than the 2.4. So they would have made, you know, well into the uh, five figures. However, they would have had to deal with this spike here, which would have gotten a little bit nerve wracking, but it's really interesting to break down this trade and to just take a look at how, from my perspective, how simple this trade is. I'm sure there was more analysis that went into it. Maybe there was fundamental analysis as well, but just again, on face value, this is very straightforward. And in my opinion, this is the best type of back testing to do. If you wanted to really supercharge your trading, I would go onto our dashboard. I would find traders in any competition, our free monthly competitions. Look at the top traders, take their trades, plot them into TradingView and just figure out what it is that they're doing. This is what I did uh, when I was doing my back testing. I don't believe in back testing a strategy, but what I specifically would do is I would look for a big spike on the chart. I would go back in the news. I would figure out what was going on at the time, what drove that market and reverse engineer those moves. And it took an insane amount of time. It was actually the only form of back testing that helped me. That is my rant on back test. Lastly, moving back over to the trade history, you can see that there was definitely a little bit of a variation in the trade size and uh, the volume that the trader was taking. A lot of seven lots here, but four lots, three lots, 0 0.01 lots. And if we scroll across, you can see seven lots, six, lo six lots, uh, and some large losses as well, 7,000, 6,000, but then a $10,000 win. So we definitely had a lot of volatility on the account. Personally, I prefer to see both from, you know, a large funding perspective, but also just a trader perspective, uh, more steady wins, a more steady growth. I can only imagine how difficult and emotional this type of trading must have been for the trader. But all that to say, they earned an incredible payout of $18,000. And if you made it this far, it is clear that you're working hard on doing 
doing the exact same. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.